Today I'll tell you the easiest way to start a song, at least for me. This is a very unconventional way, but it always gives me great results. It's unconventional because we are actually going to start with the melody. To be more specific, with a sequencer. You can use an arpeggiator, a random value generator, something like Harmony Bloom, whatever you want. In this case, I'm using Bitwig's arpeggiator, which can also be used as a sequencer. And I will start by doing two things. One is clicking at random the values for the notes, and two is to set a key filter so we can stick to one scale. To keep it simple, we will choose E minor. I will be uploading this Bitwig project to my Patreon and members pages, so you can download it. Consider supporting my channel on those platforms, so you can download many projects and a lot of presets. The fun thing is that at the end of this process, this sequence may not be the main melody at all. So as I said, you can use any sequencer you want, because most sequencers have a scale selector. And that's the most important part of this process. Because thanks to this sequence, and especially the scale, now we will know how to continue. Without going deep in music theory, different scale modes will give you different moods. And the thing is, as you hear the sequence, you will start feeling the mood of the song. Not only that, the sequence on itself also gives you some sort of rhythm. Every note is on 1 16th, but the high and the low notes will create a different rhythm. So now what I do is to add the bass. Now you may need a little bit of music theory knowledge to do this, or you can just use the same key filter if you're using Bitwig. The thing is, then we create, or we choose, whatever you want, a bass sound. And we start playing around. If you want to go as simple as you can, you can just create notes that last the whole bar. And then you create a progression. With four different notes, you will have a basic structure. Now, you may like how it sounds, but if you want, you can add variation to the bass. For instance, changing the last part of a bar into another note. Going one note before the one that comes in the next bar is very effective, but test out different notes and even different number of notes. Now you understand why this is so unconventional, because just now we go to the percussion and the drums. Now just to be clear, this is not the only method that I use to create song. In fact, most of the time I just go by feel. By the way, the best thing you can do for me is to subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. It's super easy for you, and for me it means everything. Thank you in advance. So we go to the drums and the percussion. I often start by making a simple beat with a kick and a snare. You can use whatever drums you want. I'm going to stick to samples for now because I love to use XO as a sample finder. So the thing to keep in mind is that the beat is going to enhance or even change the rhythm. If you space out the kick and the snare, you will have something slower and it's going to become a little bit more, I don't know, epic or emotional, whatever you want. Or we can go faster to get more energy. The beauty of working with drum samples is that you can start experimenting by putting some samples on random places. Also, changes in volume and whatnot will give you more variation and interesting rhythms. Then I just add a hi-hat, maybe I will add some variations here and there. And usually what I do is to choose a hi-hat and program it with MIDI. 
so I don't have to repeat a sample all the time. So you can hear that we have a basic structure for a song. But we can still add some more stuff, for instance, some chords. To make the chords, we can take the bass as the basis for the progression and then starting playing around. Let's start by making just simple and plain triads based on the original notes. It sounds good, but of course it can be more interesting. So for instance, we can take one of these chords and use an inversion. That is, for instance, playing the fifth one octave below. Not only that, we can play around with seventh chords. And a thing that I like to do is when I'm changing from one chord to another, sometimes I will change only one key until I change the chord completely. So now we have a lot more variation, it still makes sense because of the bass that we're playing. And the sequence sounds pretty good with everything together. The fun part is that you can get rid of the sequence and you still have a cohesive loop. And that's the basic thing you need to start making a song. I have another video where I take a loop and convert it into a song. You can go and watch it right here. But I'm going to give you some quick tips so you don't get just a loop, but something with more structure. For instance, we can take the same loop with the sequence and everything and use that as maybe the chorus or the most important part of the song. Then we can copy and paste it and get rid of the sequence and maybe also of the chords. We have only the drums and the bass and what we can do is to maybe use another bass sound, a little bit quieter, and get rid of some of the percussive elements. So it's more intimate, more quiet. To make things more interesting in this part we can start applying some other stuff, for instance we can take the snare and reverse it, the same for the kick. We can add some percussive elements and one nice trick I like to do, especially on these more quiet parts, is to add a granular effect to the drums. And that way you can have instant percussion but more of a weird percussion and even some ambience. Here we can play also with silences, uh, we can cut some audio to make it feel different from the chorus, which is very busy. So now we have two sections of something that can be transformed into a song. You can now even start playing around with some vocal ideas. It doesn't matter if you are a bad singer or if you don't have lyrics, just do it for the sake of it so you can get an idea of what you want the vocals to be. I don't know what to do. I know I do this for YouTube. So my viewers can have an idea on how to make a song. This is still something that you may consider to be a bit basic, but thanks to a sequence, now we have an A and a B part, and we can start working on a full song. 
So let me know your thoughts about this process. I know that there are so many different ways to start a song. As I said, this may not be even the one I use the most, but it's the one that I find the easiest. If you want me to continue this song so I can teach you about bridges, precursors, ear candy and whatever else, let me know in the comments too. So thank you so much for watching, I will see you next time and bye bye.